Good morning, y'all. So it is 5.30 a.m. It's early, early, early in the morning. I've been up all night, up to no good, like big man would say. But guess what, y'all? We got some crazy progress done. I actually was going to step over into the light. But first, check out the EK harness. It's done. This is our EK to EF harness. Fully complete. We are actually in the future, if you guys didn't know. This clip is about two weeks after the final clip in this video so basically all i did today was i got this wiring harness all loomed up all completed at the end of the video it's not going to look as pretty but it's basically going to be complete i'm going to walk you through all the nitty gritty in this video and we're going to do all the tidying up in the next video but just that way you guys can see what she looks like the final product i do say that i'm going to use these here oem eg connectors in the video but i ended up using the obd2 to obd1 conversion harness that we got from derek just because it turned out that this was a better idea this was a lot this was just a lot easier to do all in all this is the obd0 check engine light connector installed on the harness this is actually going to allow us to trigger our check engine codes when we are obd1 and then we also have our shock tower harness plug which is located on this side of the ek we have that pulled through the grommet how'd we do that whoa crazy and um we actually have all of these wires figured out these have been figured out so i'll walk you through all of that in the next video but following through the harness look at that she's looking good all loomed up and we have every sensor that we need so um right here this plug i want to talk to you all about all it basically does is splice these three green wires together. That's really all it does. I'm actually gonna be eliminating this plug and splicing these wires together and just tucking them into the loom. It's gonna be a lot cleaner than this, but um, our gray plug, I wanna talk to you guys about this because I'm gonna confuse you in this video because this is a learning curve for me. I learned this harness as I recorded this video. The yellow and black wires down here. These guys are switch power. These black wires down here, these guys are analog ground coming from your ECU. Essentially, all of these wires down here are grounded to your ECU. All of these wires are getting power from your ignition. That's all you need to know. And yeah, boys, that's pretty much it. Freaking harness is done. It is 5.30, 5.45 a.m. I'm about to go to bed. I gotta go to work later on. I'm gonna hit render on this video, upload it for you guys probably by 2, 3 p.m. And I'll see y'all then. Like and subscribe. You're probably going to learn something. If you don't, try paying attention next time. Bye. So this is a Vortec fuel pressure regulator. And um, I thought it was an entire like part, but it turns out this is just a cap for your stock fuel pressure regulator. And you have to do this to your stock fuel pressure regulator to get it on. <laughs> so I'm over here looking at my OBD2 fuel pressure regulator for the Y8 manifold and I'm like, what am I supposed to do to this thing? Anyways, what is going on, you guys? It is Thanksgiving. My family's all over and it's pretty cool. It's pretty chill. I just came out into the garage and I'm going to try to get some work done. We're going to get started on some work. In this bag, I have all of the sensors that we essentially are going to use on our block it's basically just water temp thermostat sensor stuff like that we'll get into that when we get into it this is going to be the new wiring harness for the car if you guys remember i made this tiny harness a minute ago i made this tiny harness for the crx when i first got the crx it's essentially a 91 crx si harness but pretty much what i did was i took the shock tower connectors that are normally on the shock towers of the crx and i pulled them all the way back through the firewall and then i actually pulled the shock tower connectors back through the firewall themselves and pretty much just pulled them into the center of the car. The long one right here basically needed a lot of surgery to get to that side of the car. And that is essentially how I did my wire tuck. I was never really happy about it because I originally wanted to go for what I didn't know at the time is the EK harness, where the engine is connected directly to the ECU, no BS. I didn't really know how to get that. So then I met, at some point I met Thomas and he told me that the easiest way to get any car running, any Honda, any Honda chassis, any Honda swap, is to get an EK harness, a 96 to 98 EK harness, which is OBD2A, which plugs directly into the ECU and directly into the engine. And all you have to do is connect a couple of little wires on the green ignition plug right here. 
and everything on your car will continue to work with no engine harness connected. Your shock tower plugs will literally be disconnected on the shock towers and your car will completely work the same way, except for now your engine is independent from your actual body harness. You know what I mean? If none of that makes sense, basically take it like this. You bought a CRX. EFs have so many different engine harnesses. If your car didn't come with the original engine harness, you will probably never find the right engine harness, especially if you have an 88. There's three different 88 harnesses. 89 harnesses are all mismatched and mixed and matched. And then your 9091 harnesses, there's three of those as well. And those are all separate. Many, many harnesses you can possibly have for this car. I've had many friends over the years try to build EFs without the original harness and they just run into so many wiring nightmares. So many people wonder why the shock tower connectors don't connect and just mismatch stuff like that. Or they get an 88 harness and an 88 harness, but one's SI, one's HF, one's SI, one's DX. You never know. And it just doesn't work. They never know why it doesn't work. Well, screw all of that. Forget learning about the EF harnesses. Forget figuring out which one you need what you want to do is grab a 96 to 98 ek harness as complete as you can possibly get it as you can see our connectors go all the way to the ecu those are your ecu connectors and this is also your engine harness in one piece which goes all the way to your engine it concludes everything you need to run your engine you don't even need a car to run your engine if you have this after you're done sourcing that go to the junkyard and pick up this green connector from the chassis harness of an ek cut it so that way you have these wires and you could do like you know a factory thing with your car and if you want to go a step further find an eg a 92 to 95 civic and cut the ecu connectors off of that car's harness so that way then you can essentially make your own jumper harness normally to run this setup we're going to need an obd2 to obd1 jumper harness but we're going to go a step further okay so i'm getting this engine harness all exploded um, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip everything off of it. I'm going to cut all of the loom off of it. I'm going to get all of this plastic stuff off of it. And I'm basically going to take it down to bare wires. The reason why I'm going to do this is because um, an OBD2A car, uh, 90, uh, 96 to 98 car, is going to have way more sensors than this 88 car is. And it's going to have way more sensors than our fully built engine is going to be using. So we want to strip off those wires down and basically make this harness as small as possible because you know race car um, if we ever have problems ever have shorts anything like that um, we want to be able to easily diagnose and easily assess those wires and one of the best ways to make that easier to do is to get rid of all the shit that you don't need so let's do that okay so a pack of models later i got my ek harness completely stripped i know it looks absolutely horrendous i know i know i know but chill 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 this guy is actually going to be our thermostat sensor it's our fan switch technically this is the sensor that when this guy grounds the fan turns on this is actually our thermostat sensor or our temperature sensor for our gauge cluster and it goes right here underneath the distributor this is the guy that tells our gauge cluster basically how hot or cold our engine is next guy we're going to install is this one this is our ecu thermostat sensor or temperature sensor i'm sorry i keep using the word thermostat instead of temperature but whatever that guy goes right here underneath the distributor and then our last sensor that we're going to be installing is this guy this is our oil pressure sensor um technically this guy goes right here it's our oil sender unit um, we are going to be running it, but we are not going to be running it in this location. You guys will see, but for mock-up purposes, we're going to keep it right there. So with all of our sensors installed and our harness completely stripped, now it's time for me to start mocking up the harness to the engine. I'm going to connect all of the sensors that we're going to use, and then that's going to help us identify all of the plugs that we are not going to be using, like the OBD2 EK harness comes with like um there's a perch solenoid that's somewhere around here on top of the in intake manifold that we're not going to be run etc there's a bunch of stuff like that and um we're basically just going to strip those wires out of the harness you guys will understand as we get to it so let's go the compa came over brought his whole goddamn tv my ps3 and now we got freaking old school call of duty going over there dylan's over there working on his engine in the dark <laughs> It's been cool. It's a cool Thanksgiving. It's definitely a little different from the way we normally do Thanksgiving, but this is probably 
Thanksgiving from here on out. This is pretty cool. So it's morning. Um, I'm just going through my harness, combing through it. This takes a long time. I'm already like on day two of doing this. Um, but I told you I would walk you through every single connector that I deleted. We are currently deleting our speed sensor because this EK harness uses a VSS that is electric. And the EF uses a cable VSS. And if we did use the electric VSS, our gauge cluster would not work. This would be great if we were swapping to an EK cluster or something like that, but I like the EF heart cluster, so we're gonna keep on using our stock cluster, so we will wire this up later. So we need to delete this plug. Um, basically what I learned is that you have these two connectors on the EK harness. This is basically your ground off plug, just like, um, you know, regular OBD1 fuel injector conversion involves using this guy to delete the resistor box. But then you have this blue plug, which is also a grounding plug. It also just connects all the wires. But this guy is actually a power distribution block, as I've learned, because your VSS, your electric speed sensor for an EG, an EK, or a DC Integra uses three wires. Blue wire, you have this blue and white wire. This is your signal. This goes to your ECU. This tells your ECU how fast you're going, tells your gauge cluster how fast you're going, blah, blah, blah. Um, you have a black wire which is just ground. This black wire goes directly to the gray ground off plug. And then you have a black and yellow wire. And if you're familiar with Honda wiring, black and yellow is usually a switch power. So what I've come to the conclusion of is that this blue ground off plug on the back of the EK harness, it goes underneath the intake manifold. That is actually a power distribution block. And when you flip the key into accessory, this guy gets power and gives power to all those sensors that need switch power. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, we're going to clip our speed sensor out of here and then we will convert the EK harness to a cable speed sensor later, but just mark this wire and tuck it to the side. This is all you need. Cool, three wire connector. So it doesn't look cold today, but it's cold. So I went inside, I got all bundled up. I'm wearing like five layers. Anyways, you guys. Um, so I have my IAT sensor marked off. It is um, deep pinned and just chilling. The reason why is because this sensor needs to be changed. Um, the OBD0, OBD1 design is way different than this. It's still the same two wire design, but it's a sensor that is bolted to the throttle body and you read the temps from inside of the intake manifold. For some reason in 96, they switched the intake air temp to this little push-in style that pops into the air temp, or in the this little push-in style pops into the actual intake pipe and it reads your air temps that are coming into the throttle body before they pass the throttle body. Um, I'm not sure why they changed it. I'm not sure if that design is better or more accurate or whatever, but it's a problem because this car is going to be boosted. There's a freaking turbo on the front of it. And if you have boost pressure, you're going to pop a little rubber grommet out of a freaking aluminum intake pipe right? So this needs to be secured. The B20 uses an intake air temp that is bolted to its actual intake pipe. And we're going to be doing the same thing. You can buy aluminum flanges for the older style intake air temp from speedfactory.com. We're going to go ahead and order one of those speed factory flanges. Um, probably when we put together our actual turbo kit, we'll get that aluminum bung welded on. Until then, we'll have to figure out how we're going to read air temps. But moving on from air temps, another sensor that can definitely be deleted from this freaking EK harness is this guy. This is a three wire sensor that is located by your alternator plug. And this is actually the CKF sensor. That is your crankshaft fluctuation sensor. Basically on an OBD2 car with an OBD2 ECU, um, your crankshaft and your camshaft, you know, it's a rubber timing belt. They're gonna be a little bit different. They're gonna be a little bit off time, maybe by like, you know, the very, very, very smallest hair. Well, OBD2 ECUs use this sensor to actually measure how off the cam and the crank are to get perfect ignition timing, essentially. But we run OBD1, so we're not gonna do any of that. So let's delete this. For reference sake, it is one of the only three wire connectors and it has a, bl a black wire, this is ground. It has a yellow and black wire. This is more than likely ignition switch. And then it has this orange wire, which is probably the actual signal. Okay, check this out, you guys. We're making a lot of sense of this harness. I know it still looks really crazy right there, but we have our map and our TPS sensors right here, and they're all loomed up. We have our wires coming back here all loomed up. Our alternator I shoved into the throttle body. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's all loomed up and ready to go. We're going to probably convert that because I'm on deck with like a million OBD0 alternators, and I don't have a single OBD2 alternator. So we're probably going to convert this. Um, 
And yeah, so what I was realizing is that uh, um, we have four connectors. And as you can see on our jumper harness, there's only three connectors. You only need A, C, and D. The B connector, if you didn't know, is all your automatic transmission stuff. Those are all your automatic transmission solenoids and stuff. So that means that this EK harness was an automatic harness, which I did not know. Doesn't matter, but that does explain why the harness is so big um so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually just gonna snip this entire pigtail off i'm gonna pull all these wires out of the grommet and then from there we're gonna have all the cut automatic wires i'm just gonna find out which of these connectors they go to start pulling the connectors out of the harness and from there they should untangle significantly this should be a lot neater looking afterwards so after that's done i'll check back in with you guys Okay guys, so I cut that middle connector as you can see, and then I pulled all of the automatic wires out and I just threw them on the ground. But then I thought about something. Wait, automatic EK Civics don't use idle air control valves on the intake manifold. They have them on the throttle body. That's a problem. Huh, because I got my auto air control valve already wired up. So what the hell is that? Anyways, I pulled up the um, OBD2A ECU pinout. Um, just off of Google. You could just pull that up. It's really easy. Um, and I started tracing all these wires. I started following this green wire all the way through the harness and I noticed it went to connector um, C, the blue connector right here. And then I found out that that was a power steering switch. <laughs> so we got power steering connected to our freaking idle air control valve. And if you want to know where the actual idle air control um, connector is it is actually this green plug which i incorrectly called our ckf sensor i incorrectly said this was our ckf sensor and we started deleting it um we didn't really do much to it all we did was pull out the ground but anyways this is a three wire idle air control valve so we're gonna have to do the three wire to two wire conversion on this harness anyways where is the ckf sensor right here <laughs> it's this guy i didn't recognize it because this is a shielded wire and it's brown but if you follow that brown shielded wire all the way to where the hell it goes let me see where the hell it goes it goes somewhere around here there's the goddamn brown wire the goddamn brown wire goes right here and it is red and blue so if you have a red and blue wire inside of this shielded wire that is your ckf sensor we are now going to delete this connector as well because we do not need this connector and then we will start figuring out that so actual ckf sensor delete it's right here so we're gonna have a thick 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 blue and red wire or red and blue wire it's gonna be shielded mine's brown that goes to the blue connector connector c and then we're gonna have a white and red wire this is actually the ground that goes to the blue connector as well and then after that we're gonna have this brown and black wire this one goes to this little brown plastic doohickey right here i am not too sure what this stuff is i'm not too sure what goes on here but this harness has it as well as my OGEF harness, as well as just other harnesses that I've torn apart. They always have these little guys right here. So I don't know what this is, but that's where your three wires go to. CKF sensor is now deleted. Um, that sensor, all of the wires go to the blue connector. So if you got, because um, I was noticing that this white and red wire right here, which is one of your CKF ones, this white and red wire is also present on the blue connector in the form of this white and red wire, which is your alternator. So make sure you get the white and red wire on this side of the connector, not this one. This is alternator, this is CKF. Okay guys, so we actually have a lot of progress done on this harness, as you can see. Oh my God, she's looking so much better. Things are actually starting to like make sense. Um, I know exactly what I need to do now. I have a to-do list. These um, oxygen sensors, O2 sensors, gonna completely delete them from the harness. We're not bringing them at all. Um, we have a three wire idle air control valve. This needs to be converted to a two wire. I actually have a two wire connector right here, but I don't think I'm gonna use it because it's green and black. And um, fan switch is green and black. On my OBD Zero harness for this car that I made, um, my idle or my idle air control valve was this one. It was a blue and a black wire, and they were they were thicker. The blue wire I think was still like a 16, 18 gauge, but this black wire is definitely like a 14 gauge, and it just always made it easy for me to know where my idle air control valve was and stuff like that. So I want to do that again. But you know, guys, every time we do something, we're trying to improve. We're trying to do it better. This harness was very crude. Like. 
oh my god look at all this <laughs> and then just look at these solders dude like look at these solders um you guys are probably gonna be like nate what the hell right now but basically i'm gonna tell you all the truth and the truth is is that you're not supposed to be soldering wires on your car you're not supposed to be soldering any wires on your car headlights engine harness like all the way back to like speakers and stuff like you're not supposed to be soldering wires on your car i've said this already on my instagram already a couple times and you guys have like flipped out you guys are like nate what the hell are you talking about well check it out this car has wiring issues this car ever since we've had it has gone back to the dealer like three times already and it's gotten the dash pulled and basically they replaced the entire dash harness. I'm not sure what goes on in it, but randomly the entire dash will die. I'm talking about cluster, stereo, everything. Everything will just die on the car electronically. The engine is still gonna be idling and running and stuff, but like it's just black in there. And all they do is pull the dash harness, pop a new one back in, plug it into the fuse box, all the connectors and everything, fire the car up, and then we're good to go. And that is basically the way you would do it. Like if you had a broken connector or something, you wouldn't like splice a new connector in there. That would not ever be approved in any shop at all. What you would ideally do is replace the harness. But you know, these 30 year old cars, we're lucky if we even get an original harness for our engine and stuff like that. We don't really have the luxury to just go and pop in a new OEM harness like that. But what's better than soldering what's better and more reliable and what is actually approved when you're cutting and combining wires is crimping crimping is approved not soldering if you look at your factory harness you're gonna have these blue taped areas and if you unwrap these guys these are gonna be factory crimps crimps are allowed crimps are good we like crimps look at any harness you guys any harness from factory you will never find a solder if you're not soldering onto a cpu board you should not be soldering. That's the new rule from here on out. Um, I'm always, always trying to step my game up when it comes to painting, when it comes to wiring stuff up, when it comes to building engines now. <laughs> I wanna do something better every single time. So now we're gonna cut the soldering gun out and we're not gonna be doing that anymore. So um, Drew found me this crimp set off of Amazon and then the creepy tool right here. It was pretty damn affordable and um, it looks pretty nice. This is not the Harbor Freight set, as you can see. There's no freaking like weatherproof connections and stuff like that. This is just actual crimps. And um, I already used a couple of them. So if we're doing any shortening or extending of wires of any kind, such as, you know, this oil pressure wire needs to be um, extended and put back to its original location, we will be doing crimps. And like, just think about it, guys. How does the solder, how is the solder applied to wire? The wire is heated up and the solder is mounted onto the wire and then as they cool, they harden and bond. What goes on in an engine? A whole lot of heat and vibration and stuff like that, you know, like, you can definitely mount those solders. You can definitely get them soft, maybe not get them up to temp, but you can definitely get them soft enough to possibly separate you know what i mean but a crimp's not going to do that a crimp is going to be a not a mechanical but it's going to be a physical hold like it's going to be a physical pinch of the wire like it's going to basically be like you're holding these wires together at all times so, this is all of the crap that i stripped out of the harness these are all just and then over here because our 202 sensors are actually like really nice wire they both have a shielded signal wire and that's shielded all the way to the ECU. I actually took some time to depin these and actually like, you know, not destroy it. <laughs> so these pigtails are still good. And these are, this is a lot of long shielded wire. You can use this for, I don't know, all kinds of stuff, but this is still good. I didn't destroy these. So that's that. And as for the harness, we pretty much got everything that we don't need out of it. And it's a lot lighter looking a lot lighter looking this is pretty much all of our wires going to our engine and i'm um, down here i know it still looks like a mess but we're gonna we're gonna work on that tomorrow i still need to figure out what this green plug is and then we ordered this plug from plastic garage during his black friday sale this is supposed to basically be our ignition wires in here so i gotta figure out which one of these wires needs to actually be ran to our ignition and um we should be gucci there and yeah that's basically an ek harness all torn up and custom retrofitted for my crx hell yeah oh yeah and another thing is i also did my iat sensor right here so obd2 harnesses don't use the iat sensor on the intake manifold like we're used to and if we use the regular one that comes with them it's going to pop up on, pop out under boost i found out the speed factory racing actually makes the little two bolt um aluminum flange that you can weld to your charge piping so we're going to order that and we're going to do that and then we're just going to bolt this guy probably 
I don't know, probably something like that, just out of the way, tucked where you wouldn't really see it. Okay, guys, so I'm getting a couple hours in before we go to work. Um, we're gonna do our three wire to two wire idle air control valve conversion. You only have to do this conversion if you are running an automatic engine harness. I am unfortunately running an automatic engine harness. Let me show you. Um, Classy's pretty clever, and we got this engine harness from him. And there's also this random automatic Y7 throttle body on this manifold we got from him. So um, I bet you that's where it came from. <laughs> but that is actually what an idle air control valve looks like on, on, on an automatic EK. So keep in mind that that throttle body is actually facing upwards and it's like a completely different orientation. It's not even on a manifold like this. And um, that's a three wire um, valve. I don't really know how it works, but basically the only difference is that at your ECU side, you have a positive and you have a negative. What we run is a two wire idle air control valve. This guy, this is the idle air control valve that literally everybody runs on a Honda. And it's pretty simple. You have um, signal from the ECU and then it's grounded and that's it. I think it's honestly just um, the ECU just gives it 12 volt and that's it. I think that's how it works quote me or don't quote me on that but this is how you wire it up so at your ecu or so at your connector this is your three wire connector you're gonna have three wires obviously the orange one disregard it it's completely doo-doo we're gonna remove it from the harness in a little bit but for now you're gonna want to cut that black and blue wire and i already started running my black and blue wire all the way up the harness and it is actually going to our idle air control valve yeah. the middle wire is going to be a black or a yellow with black stripe wire i actually completely depend that wire and um, that wire is right here. I ran it all the way up here to the idle air control valve. This wire is ground. If you follow this wire down your harness, it goes to the gray plug. Black and blue is gonna go to the green wire, and then yellow and black is gonna go to the black wire. And after you do that, we're gonna move on to the connector side on the ECU side. So we actually have to do a little bit of deep pinning on the connector side. Um, these OBD2 connectors have this little white thingy up here. You actually need to pry that white thingy up. It has a couple of little see little marks to pry it up at you need to pry it up it's a lock um you're literally going to destroy your plug if you try to force these pins out without pulling it up don't make the mistake i did um all we want to do is pull the black and blue wire out it's this guy right here so this is pin a14 you're going to want to pull it out of pin a14 and you're going to want to push it into pin a12 all we're doing it is moving to the other side of the orange wire push her all the way in, I think. And then the orange wire, you're just gonna pull this out and we're gonna remove it from our harness. We actually are not running this orange wire at all anymore. This is gonna get deleted with our plug. And I believe that our plug is completely removed from our harness now. So no more three wire plug that is removed, bye. And um, now we're gonna wire up our two wire plug. Mask on. So this is how crimping works, you guys. And that's that. We got a crimp on there. And um, it's pretty much like a wire staple. She's on there. You pull on it. And it's not going anywhere. I like that. I use these really tiny ones right here. And I basically just get it started with my hands. They're brass. They're not very hard. I bend them like that and kind of just pinch them over the little bit of exposed wire that we're splicing together. And then I let the tool do the rest of the work. Okay, sorry for the crappy camera angles, but like you basically just want to put that round part on top of one of the teeth, just like that. And then the tool does all the work, like it's self-locking and everything. So you don't even have to like be super strong to crimp these guys. And yeah, they're strong, very strong. And then um, I have heat shrinks at the end of the wires. Oh, 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 I dropped the camera. I have heat shrinks at the end of the wires right here. And I basically, you know, do it just like we were soldering. We do want to insulate these wires and protect them from the elements and from touching each other. And as you can see, the heat shrinks slide right on perfectly. Oh yeah. And also big shout out to Julian for bringing me these heat shrinks today. I ran out and we wouldn't have been able to do any progress today if Julian didn't bring us these heat shrinks. Really quick. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that is your three wire to two wire IACV conversion. That is done. 
So with that, all I'm going to do now is finalize some of our previous crimps that we did yesterday. I didn't have heat shrinks for every wire. So I'm gonna go back and actually heat shrink those, recrimp them, and we will be good to go. I'm gonna tidy up down here some more. I want to basically, um, you know, the extremely long wires. I wanna do something about these. These are our fuel injectors. We got this random ground that's extremely long. But for the most part, guys, all we have to do is figure out the green plug and then that other plug that's supposed to be some ignition power. I don't know what those are, but you will soon know. Like I was just showing Issa, this is how strong the crimps are. I'm like, dude. That's good. This ain't going nowhere, dude. <laughs> so we've learned a lot about this freaking EK harness, guys. There's a lot of information that I'm about to just pour into your brains right now so with that being said we are going to be ending the video after this because there's just way too much information already in here and i would like to get this posted for y'all we're gonna make a part two for sure if you guys see over there i already have my wiring harness all exploded that's my chassis harness um i'm actually going to be stripping pretty much everything engine harness related out of that the only thing my chassis harness is going to have are headlights all the way to our tail lights obviously speakers, obviously heater, climate control, obviously all of the stuff that's inside of the car, but engine related, nothing. Transmission related, nothing. All of that stuff is going to be in the EK harness. So let's get started. For the shock tower plug, this is the plug on the EK that is located right here. Um, I actually figured out what every single one of these freaking wires were. So um, it was a lot, it was definitely a lot. Let's start off with the thick ones up here. We have a thick black, and red stripe and a thick black and yellow stripe. Black and red stripe go straight to your starter. This is for your starter solenoid. When that sparks, the bridge between your starter and its solenoid are crossed and it starts spinning. Um, second one is actually going to be distributor power. This black and yellow one, this is the thick one that goes straight to your dizzy. This gives your igniter power. That's your coils power. Black and yellow wire. That's coming from your ignition switch. That is a 12 volt switch. That is actually going to be going to the top of this circuit right here and actually providing that circuit power. Next few lights or the next few wires are just warning lights. Um, the, one, the one in the middle of this white wire, so a grayish white wire, this is actually your battery warning light. Your oil warning light is this um, yellow and red wire that comes straight from this guy actually this um, yellow and green wire is actually your cluster temp that comes straight from this guy right here. Blue wire, RPMs, that's tachometer. That is coming straight from your distributor. The brown and black wire, that is logic ground. And then your regular black wire is your ECU analog ground. And then last is this black and white stripe wire. This is another 12 volt switch. And I kind of was confused because I was like, why are there two 12 volt switches? Well, this 12 volt switch actually goes directly to your alternator. And this is actually what tells your alternator to turn on and start charging. So the 12 volt switch goes directly to this blue plug and it's supposed to distribute power among all of your automatic transmission solenoids. But since we deleted all of those, it looks kind of silly that we even have these wires going into this blue plug. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them, splice them together, have, um, you know, a solid wire going straight to the ignition switch. So you probably heard me say analog ground and um, the other ground. I forgot what the other ground, logic ground. So that's something else that I learned about um, while we were doing this wiring thing. If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw all of that content. But basically, you guys probably noticed that a Honda has two ground wires. We have a solid black ground wire and then we have a bunch of brown and black stripe ground wires and they're both ground wires why are there two ground brown and black wires they're coming from this ground right here on your thermostat housing this is called logic ground this is called logic ground this is essentially the ground that we are using if you're grounding out anything like your headlights anything you ground to the actual logic ground that's your true ground um there's another ground similar to that called chassis ground but for the simplicity of this video we're going to call everything that is ground logic ground and then there's there's the black wires these wires are grounding in your ecu and these are actually called analog ground analog ground refers to the ground that comes from the power source and that ground is actually the negative battery terminal on your battery <laughs> that we're grounding to the battery and if, if you basically you don't understand how a honda works 
Every sensor gets a 12 volt power when you turn the key into on. Every sensor gets powered up, but none of the sensors get grounded until the ECU distributes that battery ground. The ECU is what distributes analog ground, and that's actually what like makes your sensors activate and stuff. Your ECU is not distributing power, it's distributing ground, but only one type of ground. It distributes analog ground. Logic ground is true ground that is always ground. Analog ground is ground that the ECU uses to control the engine. Does that make sense? So of that being said, we can understand now how these wires work. So you have your two brown and black stripe wires here. This is mainly most of your analog or most of your logic ground. These brown and black wires are coming straight through the harness to this brown connector right here. And then if you look at the bottom of the splicing plug, Sorry, the camera sucks right now, it's dark. But we splice all of those wires together and essentially we split that logic ground among a bunch of different wires and we can distribute that ground to a bunch of different places. So ultimately, if you are grounding anything in your harness and um, you know it's not something that's been pre-grounded such as a sensor, you want to use logic ground. You either want to tap into one of those brown and black stripe wires or you just want to freaking make your own ground and bolt it to the chassis or something. But you don't ever want to tap into those black wires in the harness and rob the ground from the ECU because you're just going to confuse it and make it angry. What the fuck? Freaking minivan full sending it. The only other plug I haven't truly diagnosed is this big green plug right here. I haven't truly like figured out what any of these wires are, even though I have a rough idea of what most are. I'm gonna ignore this for now. We're gonna move on from this. We'll explore this in the next video. But for the most part, guys, what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm just gonna sh make sure all these wires are the proper length. As you can see, they're kind of a mess right now. Um, I got all of these guys tucked up where I want them to be at. And um, I still haven't done anything about my altercator, but um, you know, we're making good progress. If, uh, if you guys learned anything from this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. This method using a 96 to 98 EK harness is basically the only method you need to wire up any Honda from here on out. We own 88 to 91 EFs. I've been getting into the 84 to 87 cars. 84 to 87 cars didn't even come with a wiring harness. My um, my Yonke is wired up using an EF8 harness from a CRX SIR in Japan. And that is ultimately an EK harness, but OBD0 version. That's why, that's actually what led me to find out about the EK harnesses. I talked to my homie Thomas about it, and he's the one that pretty much walked me through everything that needed to be done. But um, if you guys ever come up on another CRX or another EF and it doesn't have its engine harness, instead of going on those Facebook groups and being like, guys, what random harness? I need an OBD-1 B-series harness. Instead of saying some stupid crap like that and making yourselves look dumb, go out and get a 96 to 98 EK harness, directly plugs into any B-series, D-series engine, as you see, and directly plugs into a freaking ECU with a simple jumper harness. And then from there, you pretty much have 98% of what you need to start your car. There's only a few wires that need to be connected to the chassis harness, and that is what we're gonna talk about in the next video. Anyways, you guys, this is a series, so if I missed anything or if I didn't explain anything properly, leave a comment and I will get to it in the next video. But yeah, wiring, let's go, baby. I'll see y'all in the next one. Like and subscribe if you learned anything. If you didn't and just found this entertaining, or you wanna see Julian's car painted red, or maybe the freaking Yonke run for once, stick around, because all that's to come. Merry Christmas, have a good one. I mean, I might honestly post this video on Christmas time, <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean. See y'all, bye. Okay, you guys, back to the future. And look at that sunrise. Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> I love sunrises.